I will start with a cylinder, then I will move it by holding control to duplicate it. Now I will hold down shift and rotate it 55 degrees. I will also move the cylinder like so. Now it is incredibly easy to merge these objects because they are the same in size and in rotation segments. If I enable the wireframe mode, it is going to be more apparent. Just look at those crossing edges. In fact, let me remove those height segments. So as you can see, those edges, those crossing edges are matching perfectly. So to make things a bit more challenging and harder, I will select the second one and scale that down. We can either adjust the larger one or the smaller one. The fact that these are both primitive objects will make the process way easier because I can select this one and play around with the rotation segments. This one is smaller than that one, which means that the second cylinder should have less rotation segments to match those crossing edges. So let's come over here and lower that down until we have a match. We are not looking after a perfect match. Something rough will be more than enough. Right now, 14 is not looking that good because there's a big gap between those two edges. So I will set this to 12. Okay, 12 is looking better. But I want to go lower than that because that area might be a little problematic, you know, because you can see that we are going to end up with a triangle over here. So maybe a straight edge perpendicular to the original cylinder might be better. So I will go down to 10. Yeah, I'm talking about that edge. I just need to scale that up. A little bit. I know I am increasing up the distance here, but it's not going to be a big problem. All right, now it is time to merge these two objects. So I will add in a boolean and drop them into the boolean. I will make the boolean editable. I will tap C. And to make things a bit easier to work on, I will go to the top, select the rectangle selection, and delete that half. I can also delete those points to remove those triangles. Okay, now. As you can guess, what I am going to do is correct the topology. First thing first, I will add in two loops around here. And then I will right click and select the polygon pen tool. What I need is actually quite easy. I need two supporting loops on each side. This is the first side, which is the first cylinder. And this is the second side, the second cylinder. So simply, I need two loops that will protect the two sides. So let me select the line cut tool and add in those loops. I will connect that one to that one. I will also enable the single line. Then I will start from that point, go all the way down. Okay, we got the first protection loop. As I said, this is going to maintain the original flow of the first cylinder. Now we have the same type of loop on the second side. So this time around, just double click on those loops. Select the slide tool, hold on control and clone them down. I want these edges to be proportional to the edges down here. So I will select the proportional. Now let's go back to the points mode, select the polygon pen tool and connect those points. I can do whatever I want with those points or edges in between as these guys will, will protect the cylinders. So. Let me connect that one to that one, then slide it off. Then this area is looking fine. I just need to connect that point to that one. Same thing here. And over here, I can just connect that one to that one. Now let's drop this one into your subdivision surface. Topology wise, everything is looking perfect, but that area is going to be, you know, a little bit problematic. The reason being, that polygon is just too tight, you know, the distance from that point to that point is just too short when you compare it to the nerve edges. So what I want to do is relax that area by connecting that point to that one and that point to that one. To get rid of those triangles, I will add in new edges. Then get rid of them. I will do the same thing over here. Now I will remove that edge and enable the subdivision surface. 
that area is going to look softer. So to even things out, I will set the orientation of the axis to world. Just right click on one of them and move that down. And the same thing, I will move that up. I will also double click on that loop and slide it off. I will also drop this one into a symmetry. I just need to pick up the right axis, which is the Z. So I will turn this off and enable the Z axis. I will also enable that option. Let's turn off the short planes. If you are getting those sharp edges, you know what to do. Go to the Fong and turn off the edge breaks and increase up the Fong angle. Okay, it is looking great, except for that area. It is a bit tight, so I will just move them apart. Now that we got the first detail, I mean that fusion over here, now we can move up to the second detail which is going to be that area. And to get that part, I will select that edge and then the second one across and bridge them out with this decision shift tool. I will hold my shift and connect those edges. Now I will go back to the polygon pen tool and get rid of those polygons in between. Next up, I will select that polygon, hold my control and extrude that along the Z. You can see that if I go to the top view of that polygon is not flat. So let me set the axis to world. I mean the orientation of it. Uh, sorry, this is already set the world. So all I need to do is scale that polygon to 0% by holding the shift. I will delete that leftover. Now I will select the line cut tool, add in that edge in so that I can connect that point to that one. And I will move that point down over here. With that new polygon, you can see that that area is not looking that circular. If I select them, you will see what I'm talking about. With those points, we are breaking that circular shape. So what I'm going to do is just select them and move them along the X. Also that one. That adjustment was quite easy because I can see that part directly in the top view, but it is not going to be that easy with those edges because the surface is a bit angled. So what I'm going to do is select those edges, then align the work plane to that selection so that I can see that area directly. I will come over here and click on align work plane to selection. Now you can see that the world is relative to the selection. If I enable the work plane, you can see it a bit better. So as I said, I can see that area directly in the top view. And what I want to do is select those new edges and move them along, along the Z to have a more, you know, circular shape. I can go back to the Y axis. I will set the Y and turn off the work plane. I will select the polygon pen tool. I will connect that one to that one. Then I will simply move this around until I have the shape I am looking after. So let's enable the subdivision surface. I need to tighten up those areas. So I need sporting edges around here and here. So line cut tool, I'm going to add this one in and add in another one. These are not connected, so I will hold on control and slide that point to that point. Now it is time to cap off those holes, so I need to enable the symmetry. I will tap C, then I will remove that empty null. And I will select the polygon panel, hold on control and bridge these edges. I will go back to the edge mod, double click on that loop, hold on control and extrude these inwards. But the problem is that if you look at the scene information, I have 17 edges selected and that might be a problem because it is a not number. So I'm going to add in that loop in, which is going to give us that number 18. Actually, I forgot about the bottom part. That part has 16 edges, so 
maybe we should merge these edges in the middle then get rid of those ones i will enable the subdivision surface yeah i think this is going to be better never mind those engines when they are subdivided they result in perfect quads as you can see and this is going to help me to connect those edges let me hold the control scale this hold the control scale then select the bot loops right click stitch and shift tool hold on shift and connect those matching points i will do the same thing hold on control extrude then i will select the polygon pen tool i will merge these then get rid of those edges and now all i need to do is set the axis to normal right click normal and move them like so now i will work on the uniformity of the shape i will drop in that loop then increase up the segments i will do the same thing to the bottom now i want to add in the supporting edges to tighten up the top part so this is the first and this is the second loop. That area is looking a bit damaged, so and this is happening because of that end gun because this time around those end guns are on an angled surface. So it is quite understandable why we are getting that artifact. I mean it is a bit hard to see, but we can get around this by moving that point up. Yeah, it's great. Also, let's not forget to add these guys in, and yeah, this is going to be it basically. There is not going to be any artifacts around the, around the surface, especially where the fusion is happening, and this is happening because of that straight flow that we were able to maintain. You can spend more time getting these perfect. I mean, you can try to even those polygons as much as possible you can also select that loop and slide it to to have tighter you know fusion lastly let me change my camera and check the mesh with the material on i will drop this one then in the settings let's make it darker I will increase up the metalness and roughness. Yeah, it looks great. No problem at all. No artifacts, no pinching, no bulging. Which means that we can wrap up the tutorial. If you have any questions, suggestions or tricky shapes, you can find me on the Discord server. You can find the link in the description. And I will see you in the next tutorials.